Hey there, this is Tyler from WTFX. Today we're focusing on the Crossblur. Let's dive in. CC Crossblur. Gotta be honest here, not sure why it was created or where one would want to use it, but that doesn't mean it's completely useless. When you apply it to a layer, you can change the amount of the X and Y radius independently of each other. And in case you've already forgotten your high school math class, X runs horizontally, meaning that the blur will push the pixels from side to side, and Y runs vertically, meaning that the blur will push the pixels up and down. Using only the X or the Y radius can give you a very soft, almost daytime soap opera feel. Like string dangled from above, these two are the toys of our lives. Hello, Paul. Penelope, how are you out of the hospital so soon after the accident? I had a very good doctor. But it just happened yesterday. They said you would need a brain transplant. Like I said, I had a very good doctor. Like me. When you use both the X and Y radius together, you can begin to make out the crosses that the effect is named after. You're also able to change the transfer mode of the blur to get a different look while maintaining that cross effect. Blend is the default. Then there's Add, Screen, Multiply, Lighten, and finally Darken. There's also the Repeat Edge Pixels function, which allowed the effect to go to the edges of the frame. We cover the Repeat Edge Pixels function in our other video on channel blurs. There's a link in the description if you want to check that out. Whether you like the ability to control the horizontal and vertical aspects of the blur independently, or that you can change the transfer mode, I think there's one thing we all can agree on. Someone really needs to make a soap opera starring cats. Thanks for watching.